Hello, this is Sin City Preacher. Uh, please just call me Brother Luke. Uh, this video is a follow-up to another video I made recently called The Challenge. And the uh, video of The Challenge has had uh, hundreds of views uh, in just a few days. And I uh, noticed that no one was actually responding to the challenge questions that were posed. So I added this statement in the video description. It reads, <clears throat> I find it very interesting that after hundreds of views on this video, I still do not have a single person who has dared to specifically answer the three questions posed in the challenge. Uh, will you answer the challenge questions or not? <clears throat> uh, by the way, if you have not seen the original video, uh, I advise you to watch it now before you continue. But I want you to understand what those three questions are and why I pose those questions. First of all, the video was made to deal with uh, the, uh, the group of people who believe that uh, faith alone is not satisfactory for salvation. I believe that uh, when we trust Jesus as our Savior, we believe Jesus paid for all of our sins as he died on the cross, our faith justifies us and we're saved strictly because of our faith. No other things are required. <clears throat> but there are those who believe that faith is insufficient and they um, have a list of other requirements. Uh, some say that you must completely stop your sinning and Others say you must perform various religious types of work uh, to get saved and to maintain your salvation. So I made that video to uh, refute them and correct them <coughs> and challenge them. So the, the first question in the video is, um, since you got saved, have you sinned? And think back to the day you got saved and reflect on your life. Have you sinned at all? And if a person is going to be honest and objective, they'll have to admit they've sinned. Uh, unless they have such a narrow definition of sin that uh, you know, somebody can pass that test. But uh, if you don't know what sin is, sin is, is not simply uh, bad acts that we perform. Uh, it is even bad thoughts that we have. That's what Jesus said. And sin is not only the bad things we do, but the good things that we neglect to do. Sins of omission. <clears throat> so if a person really honestly looks at their lives, they'll have to admit that after they got saved, they have not been able to go through their lives uh, sin-free. It even says in 1 John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So I'm hoping that if a person ref, uh, tries to honestly answer that question, they will be convicted and know that they have not been able to pass the test that they're imposing on others. That is, that you must stop all your sin. And then another uh, question is, for those people who say that religious work is necessary for salvation, I ask them, <clears throat> will you tell me the religious works that you're performing on a daily basis. What works are you doing that justifies your salvation? And um, if a person takes the time to actually write down a list of all the righteous things that they do, then I refer them to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and it says, For it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. And as soon as someone tries to justify their salvation because of the good things that they've done, they're turning over a new life, their leaf, their, their changed life, their stopping sinning, their religious rituals they're performing, their ministry, their witnessing, as soon as they make that list, then they are boasting and they are guilty of spiritual pride. And that's a sin. And then the, the uh, 
<coughs> is also a, a slippery slope when you do that because how much work is enough? Uh, I personally, I do all kinds of religious works, but I don't want to compare myself to others. I know that there are others that com my life compared to theirs, I, I am way below them. And they can, might point the finger at me and say, you, you've not done enough religious work. I really question whether you're even saved. Is that is that the path you want to go down where we're all pointing the finger and judging whether someone's doing enough work, whether they're truly a Christian? Um, and then the, uh, the final uh, question is... Uh, uh, on the video description, I, I list um, 10 or 12 verses in the Bible that specifically, clearly, inescapably state that we're saved simply because of our faith in Jesus as our Savior, that no religious work is required for salvation. And I challenge them, well, you, you must refute these verses. It, they clearly state that works are not required, only faith. So I'm challenging you to refute them. Interpret, explain, refute those verses. And um, no one has accepted the challenge. And it's my hope that when they, when they study those verses to refute them, they will understand the verses and see their errors. Well, a couple of days ago, someone accepted the challenge. Uh, a YouTube user named uh, U2 Yvonne. She started off by uh, uh, rebuking and chastising me for my false teaching. <clears throat> and I emailed her back. I said, well, you're condemning me, but you're, 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 you failed to answer the questions. Are you going to take the challenge or not? And then she said, okay, I'll, I accept the challenge. And she did considerable work, put a lot of effort into actually answering those three questions. When she answered the first question, she reflected on her life and had to admit that she hasn't been able to be sin-free. She, Since she got saved, she has still had some sin in her life. And then the second question, she made a long list of her daily activities, all the good and righteous things she does. And of course, violating Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 and boasting about her righteousness. And then... Uh, in the third question, uh, refute these verses. And she attempted to refute one verse, but didn't really do it, and then neglected to refute all the others. So I emailed her back the answer. I came her. I said, Yvonne, you are guilty. Your own words condemn you. Uh, you said you did not stop sitting. And by listing all your religious works, you are boasting of your righteousness. See Ephesians 2, 8, 9. <clears throat> also, you are a double talker. You say salvation is by faith as a free gift. Then you refute your own statements in your next breath. You did not refute the clear statements in the verses that I asked you to refute. You have proven to be a self-righteous hypocrite. With no understanding of scripture, you are the Pharisee that Jesus condemned in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. I didn't like sending her that message, rebuking her, but I did that last night. I went to bed. When I woke up this morning, I got this email from her. <clears throat> Yvonne says, you are absolutely 100% right. God has convicted my heart and gave me confirmation of it this morning. I am praising God that he has shown me my error. I am now resting like I have never rested before. No longer sin conscious. I thank you for putting this challenge out and pray that Jesus will confirm to many more hearts the truth of your statements. I am guilty and always will be and Jesus knew it. And he knew that I would sin again. And he already paid my price. With my faith alone I am saved. I believe Jesus took me through this process to teach me a valuable lesson. One which I have learned. Thank you, sir. And forgive me my ignorance 
I look forward to meeting you at the wedding feast of the Lamb. God bless you, your sister in Christ, Yvonne. Well, when I got that message this morning, I immediately emailed Yvonne back. Sister, when I went to sleep last night, I was very distressed over our argument. Now I just woke up to this most joyful news. Bless you, sister. All the praise and glory to Jesus, our Savior, Brother Luke. And I hope more of you will answer those three questions. and It will cause you to rethink your error.